preparing my racket, which is the arm, and about this kind of disconnect between, um, between public perception and reality because the press is broken heart, aren't you? And I'll just use, I'll just uh, talk about one industry as an example, as an industry that has an impact here in Oklahoma. Uh, but in my book, I talk about all these different industries that have a chokehold on this administration and that are engineering rollbacks that are very harmful to the American public, um, including you know, the, the uh, corporate factory farms, the, the poultry farms, the turkey farms, the, the hog farms in particular, and the dairy farms, um, which are, of course, farms, they're factories, um, the chemical industry, the nuke industry, and many others. I'm just going to talk tonight about one industry, which is coal burning car plants. I have three sons who have asthma. One out of every four black children in American cities now has asthma. We know that asthma attacks themselves are triggered primarily by bad air, by ozone particulates, and the principal source of those materials in our atmosphere are 400 coal burning power plants that are burning coal illegally. It's been illegal for 18 years under the Clean Air Act. Um, many plants, incidentally, did clean up. For example, in Massachusetts, most of the New England states, all of the plants cleaned up. They stopped discharging ozone particulates by installing, you know, um, the machinery to remove those things. And in fact, in most of the blue states, the plants did clean up. But in the red states, where the, the corporations can easily dominate the state political landscapes, they were not required to by local enforcement agencies. And there are 400 of them um, that, that are breaking the law. The Clinton administration was prosecuting the worst 52 of those plants, criminally and civilly. But this is a industry that donated $48 million to President Bush during the 2000 cycle and had given $58 million since. And one of the first things that President Bush did when he achieved office was to order the Justice Department and the EPA to drop all those lawsuits. The top three enforcers of EPA um, Bruce Buckeye, Sylvia Lawrence, and Eric Schaefer all resigned their jobs in protest. These weren't Democrats. These were people who had worked through the Reagan administration, the previous Bush administration. The top Justice Department attorney said that this has never happened before in American history, where a presidential candidate accepts money from criminals under indictment and orders those cases dropped and they achieved office. As soon as he did that, the president then went and abolished the new source rule, which was the heart and soul of the Clean Air Act the most important provision in that statute. That's the rule that required those plants to clean up 18 years ago. So now there's no requirement that they ever have to clean up the ozone and particulates. And all of those plants in Massachusetts and elsewhere that invested in the new equipment are now at a terrible disadvantage in the marketplace. And I'm going to be able to watch my children gasping for air on bad air days because somebody gave money to a politician. And if you go to EPA's website, when you go home tonight, or back to your hotel room, not NRDC's website, but federal EPA, you'll see that that single decision alone by President Bush to abolish the new source rule kills 18,000 Americans every year. Six times the number of people who were killed in the, in the uh, World Trade Center attacks. But not just once, year after year after year after year after year. This should be the front page headline of every newspaper in this country every day. But you won't read about it in the American press. Um, about 20 months ago, White House, the EPA announced that in 19 states, it is now unsafe to eat any freshwater fish caught in the state because of mercury contamination. In 49 states as of last week, and the mercury is coming from those same coal burning plants. In 49 states, at least some of the fish are unsafe to eat. That includes Oklahoma and also my home state of New York, where almost all the fish, but not quite all of them, are unsafe to eat. Um, in fact, the only state where all the fish are still safe to eat is Wyoming, where the Republican-controlled legislature has refused to appropriate the money to test the fish. And in all the other states, <laughs> at least some knows where all the fish are unsafe to eat. We know a lot about mercury we didn't know a few years ago. We know, for example, that according to CDC, one out of every six American women now has so much mercury in her womb that her children are at risk for a grim inventory of diseases, autism, blindness, mental retardation, heart, liver, and kidney disease. 
I have so much mercury in my blood. I got my levels tested recently, and every woman of childbearing age should have her levels tested. Everybody should get their levels tested because the mercury is such a potent brain poison. It's associated with Alzheimer's and lost memory and a lot of other bad stuff. Dementia, but um, and you can get your levels tested by going to our website, Water to Provide, and sending us a little lock of your hair, and we'll send you back your your mercury levels. But my levels were two and a half times what EPA considers safe, just from eating fish. I was told by Dr. David Carpenter, who's the National Authority on Mercury Contamination, that a woman with my levels of mercury in her blood would have children with cognitive impairment. And I said, you mean she might have? And he said, no, no, no. The science is very certain her children would have some level of permanent brain damage, probably an IQ loss in those kids at my levels of mercury, a permanent IQ loss of about five to seven points. Well, today, according to CDC, there are 640,000 children born in this country every year who've been exposed to dangerous levels of mercury in their mother's wombs. The Clinton administration, recognizing the gravity of this national health epidemic, reclassified mercury as a hazardous pollutant under the Clean Air Act. That triggered a requirement that all of those plants remove 90% of the mercury within three and a half years. It would have cost them less than 1% of plant revenues, and we know it works. We know that as soon as they remove that mercury within three years, the mercury disappears from the fish downs, downwind of those plants. So it was a great deal for the American people, but still billions of dollars for that industry. And that's the industry that gave $100 million to this president. And about seven months ago, the White House announced that it was scrapping the Clinton Ever rules and substituting instead rules that were written by utility industry lobbyists that will require the industry to never have to clean up the mercury. The new rules, incidentally, were written by a law firm called Latham and Watkins, which does some good things, but it is the law firm for the worst of the worst of the worst of these utilities companies, like the Southern Company, which is just a criminal enterprise. And the chief lobbyist for that law firm, for Latham and Watkins, was until recently a man named Jeffrey Homestead, who today is the head of the Air Division at EPA. So he just took rule language law that was written by his colleagues for his old clients and made an American law. And, um, and saved billions of dollars for his money by imposing tens of billions of dollars in costs on the rest of it. And I'll tell you the rest of that story. Um, we fought him on this, and it took them longer than they thought, um, but he finally got it done. And two days after they finished those new mercury regulations, his two top deputies, who were both former lobbyists for the Southern Company, quit EPA to go back to work for the Southern Company, their public service days being done. And um, about a month ago, Jeffrey Homestead finally left EPA, and he went to work for Bracewell Giuliani, which is Rudy Giuliani's law firm, which is the new lobbying firm for the, for the Southern Company. And so this is how we're going to work. Philip Cooney, I didn't tell you, the guy who was the president's chief advisor, he had to leave because the New York Times, you know, exposed him. And two days after he left, he was hired by the Exxon Corporation, where he's working today. And really, you know, he never stopped working for Exxon. It's just that we were paying him for six years as he dismantled all the, you know, regulations that protected him. And um, 